right, welcome to another episode of Stacking M's where we talk about marketing, money, and mindset. I am Tara Payton, marketing consultant and business coach. And today, I want you to ask yourself this question. Are you marketing your brand to be sexy or are you marketing your brand to be profitable? Okay, right? So I understand how you can get caught up in trying to make your brand look sexy. It's the marketing that's the front end, right? That's what we call front end marketing. It's what everyone sees. It's what's visible. It's the marketing campaigns. It's the working with influencers, the models, the photo shoots, the video shoots, all of the things, right? The fun stuff, the creative stuff, probably the stuff that you love to do. But when it comes to building a brand that's actually going to be profitable, you got to think about the back end marketing. And in the back end marketing, that's the stuff that's not sexy, right? It's the funnels, it's the tech, it's the emails, it's the text messages. But I will tell you this, the back end marketing is really where the money resides. And if you're not focused on the back end marketing, regardless what you do in the front end, you're going to fumble the bag, okay? So I want you to think about this. Let's say, because everyone wants to go viral, let's say you create a piece of, of content and you have a marketing campaign that literally goes viral. It blows up your brand and you have so many people rushing to your website, you have so many people signing up to your email list and you, feel excited, but you are also overwhelmed because on the back end, when they sign up for that email list, the only thing that they get from you is an email that says, hey, thank you for signing up for our email list, and that's it. So that's a clear way that you have fumbled the bag because you have not set up the back end marketing, the email sequences that are going to nurture them and encourage them to make a purchase, to tell them what are your best selling products, to let them know more about you, right? to connect with them on a personal level. So while the back end marketing may not be sexy, I can assure you it is really where you're going to make your money and become more profitable. So let me break down what front end versus back end marketing is. Front end marketing is really all about acquiring new customers. And the goal of front end marketing is getting them to make their first purchase or to actually like sign up for your email list. So it's really getting people to come and engage with your site for that first time. Now, front end marketing also keeps you top of mind for existing customers, but because you probably already have their email and their text message, you can engage with them directly on their cell phone where they're going to be making purchases and you don't have to spend as much time focused on front end marketing with them. Now, if you haven't already figured it out, back-end marketing is all about customer retention. How do you keep your customers happy? And the goal there is profitability and adding value, okay? So you want to actually also think about how long is someone going to be a customer with you so that you can maximize how much they're going to spend over that time period that they are a customer and engage with your brand. I understand why most brands only focus on front end marketing because it's fun, right? It's less intimidating. You can try out a lot of things. If you're a creative, you can be very creative. You can just get to, you know, explore and expand. And there is definitely a place for front end marketing or else we would not be talking about it. But I want you to have a visible brand that is not only visible, but profitable and making money. So let's talk about some of the main reasons why back-end marketing is so important and how you can actually do it. So the first one is customer retention, right? The whole goal of customer, of back-end marketing is to make sure that you are retaining customers getting them to spend more. And so customer retention is really, really important. So I'll ask you this, what's better than one customer? Two, 10, 15, 100? No, it's actually what's better than one customer is keeping that customer and any other customers that come through. And the reason being is because it is actually 
cheaper to keep your customers and you want to um, make sure that in keeping your customers and retaining your customers that you are actually encouraging them to spend more. You're following up with them and reminding them, hey, you might be out of the product by now because you know how much, how long it takes for them to use the products and how long it takes for them to pretty much be at the end of the life of using whatever products they've purchased from you. So because that's the case, you can set up different sequences and reminders to, to trigger them and say, hey, come back and make a purchase. You haven't purchased from us in a while. We know you love this product. Come back, right? And there are many other ways for you to retain your customers, but make sure that you're retaining your customers and not just getting new ones. Now, I want you to also think about customer lifetime value. What this means, customer lifetime value, is essentially how long are you going to have a customer be a customer, right? That means that they are participating, they are spending with your brand, they are actually spending money. Now, there is a formula for customer lifetime value, and that is actually whatever your average transaction size is or your average order value times the number of transactions on average that a customer makes times the retention period that you have for a customer. So you really want to know more about your customers. How long are your, are your customers sticking around? If they're just making that first purchase and they never come back, then you have a customer retention problem and you really need to focus on how do you retain them and keep them around so that they're shopping for longer periods of time with your brand. Now, in the back end, you also want to make sure that you're adding value. And this is one of those areas that people kind of get confused about or they feel um, they feel like, okay, I'm adding value on the front end marketing, right? I have so much value that I'm adding on the front end. How do I do that on the back end? And think about it like this. What is your customer experience like? After someone makes a purchase, if they interact with customer service, what does that look like? Do you have an email and email sequences that are going to go out to them to thank them for their purchase? Are you personalizing the experience of that customer on the back end so that they feel like they are your only customer, even though you have thousands of customers, right? So think about what that experience looks like. What is the experience you want your customers to have when they're interacting with your brand, not only on the front end, but on the back end? That is so very important and it makes a huge difference because I will tell you this, a customer is going to refer you to someone else based off of that customer experience and of course, if your products are good. If your products ain't good, they ain't checking for you no more. But if they get to you, they're shopping, they made a purchase and they have experience they have been a part of your customer service experience that is going to keep them loyal and shopping with you over and over and over again now at this stage you also want to make sure you're getting feedback make sure that you are taking this opportunity to ask your customers how you can improve your customers will tell you what they want right um, I encourage my clients to call customers, right? You're not too big uh, or too too large to call customers, right? Call 10 customers and say, hey, thank you so much for your purchase. I just wanted to let you know I'm the founder of XYZ Brand and I wanted to see if there's anything that we can do for you. Do you understand how how far that can take you by just calling a couple people every month to say thank you? right? They're going to rave about that because how people perceive brands nowadays is that there's people behind it and they're not personalized. And so if you go above and beyond and you give that phone call to just 10 customers a month, they're going to talk about it. They're going to share that. They're going to, you know, and that's free marketing for you. Word of mouth. Now, when it comes to increasing profitability, so I want you to think about how can you get your customers on the back end to buy more, right? And so this actually, I'm going to come at this from the standpoint of things you can do on the website and then things that you can do on other channels. So if you think about it from a website perspective, one of the ways that you can actually increase your profitability is by um, when someone checks out, they've finish their checkout, and you offer them a one-time offer of a product to add to the cart, 
right? Something that is quick, simple, easy for them to add to the cart. It's not too expensive. It's like a no brainer, right? They put that in the cart and they add that to the order. And that is a way for you to increase your profitability. And that is back in marketing, right? You've already gotten their purchase. You're just having them add more items to the cart to increase their average order value for you. Now, when you think about um, from an email standpoint, you have email and text message standpoint, you have ample opportunities to actually get people to spend more, right? Now, I tell my folks this, you have the opportunity to sell more via email than you do on the front end when you're on social media and on other platforms promoting and marketing your products and your brand. So take this as an opportunity to sell your products, right? Now, let me clarify, sell. When I say sell your products, that does not mean that you need to have a sale on your products. It really is what are you offering your customers on the back end to keep them purchasing, to get them to shop more frequently, to get them to spend more, okay? So I recently signed up for a meal subscription kit and I haven't pulled the trigger on it yet. However, the amount of text messages that I received from this company about offers that they have, it's not necessarily a sale, but they are letting me know they are keeping top, they're keeping their brand top of mind for me so that when I'm ready to go ahead and purchase the meal subscription kit, I already know who I need to go to and what offers they have. I honestly probably get three text messages a day from them. And I don't even know the emails because I don't check my email that often. But I know they're in my inbox. So I say all that to say, do not feel like you should not email your list. Do not feel like you should not send text messages. This is really how you make money, right? the back end, the funnels, the systems that you have set up. And the beauty of all of this, right, back end marketing can be automated. You don't need to be there to do it. You don't need to physically send the text message. You don't need to physically send the email. You can automate it, and that's the beauty of also having a strategy because if you have a strategy, you know what you're offering, when you're offering it, and when you want it to go out to your customers and to your audience. So automate it, right? Take all of this information, get it set up, and um, you know, make sure that you are building a profitable brand with your marketing and not just a sexy brand. Now, the last thing that I will say about back-end marketing is that it's free. Free 99, you don't have to pay for it. Essentially, all you're paying for is whatever platform you're using. So whoever your email provider is or your text message provider, that is something that you're, that's all you're paying, but it's free. You're not spending money on ads. You're not spending money on campaigns. You're not spending money on that front end marketing that does take that additional money and in investment. So I'd encourage you to spend some time thinking about your back end marketing. How can you use that as a part of your strategy to actually drive more sales and increase your profitability? Now, keep it sexy in the front. Like, I don't want y'all to have a little dry brand in the front and have your, your back-end marketing popping. Keep it sexy in the front-end marketing, but make sure you have that back-end marketing strategy in place so that you are maximizing your profits and taking advantage of people who are actually going to be engaging in customers, become customers of your brand. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Stacking M, and I will see you on the next one. This is all not peaches and cream. This is not all like ice cream and sprinkles. And you know that this is the part of entrepreneurship that nobody talks about that you deal with.